how's it going? My name is Alex and today we're going to talk about the new HOS which are going into effect September 29th. All right, so this has been probably in the works for a very long time. Ever since the ELD mandate passed, people have been trying to, uh, you know, get rid of some of those things in the ELD. Uh, so that's that's why um, th we, you could kind of see this coming. And then earlier this year, we heard about all of these uh, little rules. But before we even get into any of all that, let's just actually go break down what it says. Okay, so I'm on the FMCSA website and it says the FMCSA revises the hours of service regulations to provide greater flexibility for drivers subject to those rules without adversely affecting safety. The agency, one, expands the short haul exception to 150 air miles and allows a 14 hour work shift to take place as part of that exception. Two, expands the driving window during adverse driving conditions by up to two additional, or up to an additional two hours. Three, requires a 30 minute break after eight hours of driving time instead of on duty, right? And allows an on duty, not driving period to qualify as the required break. And four, modifies the sleeper berth exception to allow a driver to meet the 10 hour minimum off duty requirements by spending at least seven hours rather than at least eight hours of that period in the berth and a minimum off duty period of at least two hours spent inside or outside the berth provided the two periods total at least 10 hours and that neither qualifying period counts against the 14 hour driving window. So goodness gracious, that might've been a lot. So those are the four things that they passed and they go into effect, like I said, September 29th. And you can actually see that by clicking the hours of service and driving federal register notice. And in that notice, you can actually see that the um, publication date was 6-1 and the effective date is 929. So that's Monday, September 29th, 2020. It does go into effect, okay? Now, what do all of those rules even mean for you as a hotshotter, okay? So first and foremost, the 150 air mile radius as a non-CDL hotshotter, I, I could already take advantage of the 150 air mile radius. That was already for us. I believe it was 150 for 26,000 and less and 100 for somebody over 26,000, right? And so now they're making it simple. It's everybody gets 150. Fine, good. I've never once used that. So uh, kind of like, who cares? Uh, so I, I'm talking about a hotshotter. Now, for a bunch of trucking companies, for a bunch of local drivers, like that is night and day, you know what I mean? So uh, it, it, I'm sure there's gonna be tons of companies that take advantage of us, but as a non-CDL hotshot, absolutely does nothing for me. Two is the expands the driving window during adverse conditions. Um, you know, if the ad, if the conditions are really that bad, uh, you know, you, you kind of pull over and stop. <laughs> but I mean, obviously we're talking about maybe something crazy like a snowstorm in Wyoming. You kind of, your time is up, but you don't want to stop in the middle of a snowstorm. So you kind of just drive through because you see maybe the weather's better up ahead. Uh, I don't, I've never used the adverse condition, uh, the adverse driving condition uh, because the DOT, like if you get it inspected and they see that and you're over your 11 hour driving, out of service, it's, it's, it's terrible. So, um, so yeah, that's really, it doesn't mean anything either. Number three though, okay, this third one requires a 30 minute break after eight hours of driving time instead of on duty time. This one is really good. Oh, and not only that, you can meet the 30 minute break requirement with on duty or off duty time. This one right here really is the one that as a hot shotter you can take advantage of because here's the thing, right now, it, how it works, <clears throat> excuse me, is so you do your PTI, your pre-trip inspection in the morning, let's say 6 a.m., right? And then from 6 a.m., within eight hours, you have to get a 30 minute break in there. But your PTI is 15 minutes, so technically you have only 7.45 of driving. But then you stop for fuel one time for 15, 20 minutes, and now you only have 7.25 uh, left, right? So in reality, you only have 7.25 of driving, right? But let's say this, you then go deliver five, 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 or five hours later of driving, you go deliver your load, and then you hit the road again to go get your next load before the shipper closes, and you see on your clock, you gotta take a 30 minute break. And it's like, ah, 
darn it. You know, that, like that's usually how it works. You go deliver in the morning, you're rushing to your next pickup and you see you you did a break, but you just took an on duty unloading event. You just stand there and twiddle your thumbs unloading for 40 minutes, right? And so that's why some people, um, they've suggested, uh, I'm not saying, no names, no, I'm not saying, but it's been common in the trucking business to what you do is you pull up to a receiver, to a shipper, and you mark on duty load for five, 10 minutes. And then you go back and you mark off duty to get your 30 minute break in there. That's been the common thing, right? That's not, it's no secret, it's nothing crazy. You just mark on duty load that you pick up your load and then you go mark off duty right away to get your 30 minute break. So then once you get back into the truck, you can hit the road. And so maybe the FMCSA finally saw that and they're like, well, you know, most guys really aren't out there kind of loading and unloading. And plus it's good for them. If they are, it's good for them to stretch their feet anyways, right? So if the goal is to get somebody to stretch their feet instead of just sitting and driving, then the on-duty loading and unloading or fuel stop, that should count as well. And so this third one is really, really what's going to be awesome because it's going it, to, now you don't have to go out of your way to take that 30 minute break. Now I'm not, you don't have to worry about, oh, I got to go mark off duty so I can get a 30 in there. Now you don't have to do, and here's the big one. You don't have to do a 30 minute break at the fuel island. This is going to, this third one is actually going to help a lot of people. And hopefully if FMCSA realizes what they just did really good, this is really good because now here's what you can do, right? Let's say it takes you, you know, 20 minutes to fill up, right? Okay, great. 20 minutes. Then you just sit another 10 in, in front. You don't have to sit a whole nether 30 right? Because I know a lot of truckers, they fill up, they mark their on duty for fuel, and then they sit for another 30. But this can actually shorten that a lot. So really, really good stuff. Um, that third rule is really amazing. Um, and it's 30 minutes, you have to take a 30 minute in eight hours of driving, not so technically, if you have on duty 15, you have a driving eight hours, and then you have to take your 30. That's technically mean you've been working now for 815 instead of 745 or instead of eight, like normal and only 745 of driving. So really that third rule is if you're a hotshot, that's the one you want to really pay attention and know. Um, so it's super, super beneficial. And then the fourth one modifies the sleeper birth exemption. Um, most hotshots don't have a sleeper birth installed, so you should not be logging sleeper birth anyways. You should just be doing a full 10 hours off duty. I could see how a lot of truck drivers could take advantage of this fourth one though, because at the end of the day, if you're a truck driver, you pull into a parking spot, you park, you shut her down and you go hit the hay, right? That's it. You just go to bed right away. And so you get your seven hours in and then you're sitting and twiddling your thumbs for an hour or two, three hours, right? And, and then you're even, that's even worse, right? And so by doing the seven hour sleeper birth, it makes sense that if you just go right away to the sleeper and you sleep for seven hours, you can wake up, fire it up, you can get back on the road. And then sometime throughout that day, you got to take that additional three hours off duty, which doesn't count towards your 14 hour window and before it used to. But the problem is this, this doesn't affect hot shots at all. So really as a hot shotter, if you're watching this, you know, really pay attention to that third one. Um, I'm going to leave the website, the link right away down in the description. Uh, and so that you could go read it for yourself. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.